During the last few months, my wife and I work very hard, so our son will, would regularly say, please, when he's asking for something, and so far we're not that far from it, but we're very proud of him, so our next challenge would be to convince him to say thank you. And as every parent in the world knows, this is a very difficult process. And yet we'll keep fighting this fight and this battle because, because it's important. And it's more than just a, a social norm. Saying thank you is a way of life. It's still the best tool we got to manifest our appreciation for what we just received or for what someone just did for us. And on Thanksgiving weekend, everything tells us that this is the perfect opportunity to say thank you. Everything surrounding us reminds us that we should count our blessings on days like these one. It is so present, so persistent, that sometimes it feels a little awkward. Somehow, the impression is that we ought to be thankful if we don't want to be perceived as a bad person. And oh yeah, of course we can recite this very long list of general stuff and cliches of what we can be thankful, like thank you for life, the sun, the hair we breathe, blah, 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 blah. However, most of us sometimes struggle when we are asked to express genuine and specific expression of gratitude. And because sometimes we don't know what to say because, let's face it, thanksgiving is not something that could be command or order. So this week I would like to show you a clip I received a few days ago. Thank you, Bob. And the beginning might be a little bizarre. Might not sure where he's going with his story, but try to stay with it and see where it's going. So, and it worked at nine o'clock, so it should work now. Okay, so. So the other morning, I'm making a smoothie. You know, I got my fruit in the blender, and the only thing is, I can't find this little inner lid that that goes in the top, right? You know, I look everywhere. Han, do you know where that lid is? I mean, where is it? Yeah, I figure, I'll just put my hand on the cover. Turn the blender on and, hmm, frozen blueberries, they shouldn't sound like that. <laughs> Oops, I found it. Inside the blender, under all that fruit, was the top. I mean, it's clear plastic, right? So easy to miss. Uh, but get a load of this. Guess what? Guess who put it in there the last time they used the blender and put it away? Me. Uh, you know, this is a replacement. Anyhow, it, it's kind of like, you know, the kids when they used to stand in front of the fridge, doors wide open. Where's the ketchup? And we'd walk up and pull it off the top shelf right in front of their eyes and give it to them. You know, at times, it can be really difficult to see what's obvious. You know, and with gratitude, it can be even more difficult. So here's the thing. If you can't find what you're grateful for, you know, maybe you're not looking hard enough. You know, maybe you're looking too hard, or maybe, maybe, maybe you're like me looking for this little lid, is that you're looking in all the wrong places. You need to look in the obvious places first. And with gratitude, that's the places where you find the simple things in life that money cannot buy. 
Thank you. At this point, I would like to invite you to do something I would like to share with one another. I know, I know there's introvert in this room, and maybe that's the worst thing I can think of for a sermon about th on Thanksgiving, but let's try it in small group with maybe people around you, which may or may not include your partner. That's up to you. And I would like to invite you to share with one another one good news, one event, one little thing that you are honestly and truly grateful this morning. I know I, I learned that today. I know usually that during the sermon, I speak and you go like this. For the next five minutes, I want you to go like this, okay? Okay, so go. Talk to one another for five minutes, something you're grateful for today. I would like to bring you back. It's such a great energy I'm sensing here. <laughs> I'm sensing great energy, and that's wonderful to hear you sharing uh, at such, uh, with such enthusiasm. And I'm sure you're sharing uh, something that is wonderful and all those things. And I think it's important because it's so easy to forget to give thanks, and especially for the small things of life. And sometimes we forget because we assume we deserve what we receive. We convince that we deserve service exactly when we want them. We think our needs should be at the top of everybody's priority list. We believe we deserve the privileges and the status we acquire through birth, through schooling, or work. And when someone gives us something, a little something, a service, or rescue us during a difficult time, well, sometimes we don't say much because we feel that we deserve what we just received. Saying thank you is almost an act of defiance or words only pronounced these days by grandmas, which I love dearly. It is similar to what we encountered today in the Gospel reading. After Jesus fed more than 5,000 people, the crowd keep asking him and following and asking him for more bread. We are hungry because we are following you. We deserve to eat, so fill our needs. We deserve this. Those individuals did not understand that the bread Jesus gave that day was a symbol of the trust we can have in God. And this trust in God gave us the capacity to do transformative miracles in the world. The crowds look at the event it, in what we can call a mentality owner. What do I have, and special, or more importantly, what can I do to have more? Instead of looking at the event in a stewardship mentality, what did I receive? What should I do with this? And how, and how can I share this blessing with everyone around me so everyone could be happy? I would like to show you a second clip and it's from a movie this time. The movie, it's about a boy with Hugh Grant. I thought that I would get the attention of the ladies with the Hugh Grant movie. <laughs> or some guys, I'm not judging here. Without getting into too much details, um, Hugh Grant's character is a bit like many of the characters he's playing. He's a self-absorbed, single, wealthy socialite that does not really care about a lot of things in life. But in the movie, he developed a friendship with a 12-years-old boy who is bullied, uh, bullied at school. So 
Let's look at this. If once again we can have the lights be uh, turned off, please. So who were they then? Who? What do you mean who? The ones trying to embed sweets into your skull. Oh, them. Just a couple of older kids started following me after school. Was it this happen often? I never touched sweets before. I only just thought that one. I'm not talking about the sweets. I'm talking about kids trying to kill you. Oh, yeah. They give me a hard time. You know, about my hair and my clothes and singing and stuff. And what? And singing? Oh, sometimes I sing aloud without noticing. That's not a brilliant idea, is it? I said I did it without noticing, didn't I? It just happens. I'm not going to do it on purpose, am I? I'm not stupid, you know. Well, my advice is just, you know, keep out of people's ways. Try to make yourself invisible. How am I supposed to be invisible? Is one machine in your kitchen an invisible machine? I don't think so. I just try not to think of it. That's all. It happens and I wish it didn't. But that's life, isn't it? There's nothing I can do about it. No. There is something we can do about it, Marcus. Coming with me. I was worried Will was going to take me to the headmistress's office. But instead he took me shopping. I don't kill it. Okay, we're starting with your feet, Marcus. Can't make you invisible, but I can make you blend in with the crowd. I don't know how to tie them. Got these funny strappy things. Yeah, it's called Velcro. It's a revolutionary new technology. Oh, fuck. Sorry. It's not hard. All right, wait a minute. It is a bit hard. Everything all right? Yeah, thanks. Yeah. He's pretty trendy, your old man, isn't he? Yeah, hey, you think you look cool, don't you? Don't know. Do you think I look cool? Yeah, Marcus. I think you look cool. Yeah. <laughs> That's it, you got the walk. That's really cool. Brilliant. High five. Yeah. I was suddenly hit by an extraordinary rush of well-being. So this is what people meant by a natural high. And it only cost 60 quid. I had made an unhappy boy temporarily happy. And there wasn't anything in it for me at all. Once again, I would like you to get back in a little group and share once again, and this time about how you can use the blessings you have and help others. How you can make this world just a little better. How can you be a good steward of all the blessings you receive? Let's try this for five more minutes. Thank you. Thank you for sharing a few words. I'm sure there were amazing stories you shared to one another, amazing things. And it's important to do this because, because we might not like this fact, but inside each and every one of us, there's this little part inside us that is tempted to circle the wagon and, and care only for our kin or community or country. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. We know that we have obligation for the rest of the world. Yet this little part inside of us says that, well, our talent and our gift should be used firstly here and according to our needs. And on days like Thanksgiving, we are reminded that we are all of us are in this together. We are all connected to one another. Our personal fulfillment is linked to the well-beings of others, including people that we never met before and people we'll never probably meet in our life. And we need to tell to this little part inside of us that we are constantly receiving something, that we're constantly giving something, and it's only through this constant exchange that we will be aware of the blessing God's bestowed upon all of us and upon humankind. Because, because giving thanks 
saying thank you. It's a call to turn from individualism to wider and wider circle of care. It's an invitation to remember all of those who have helped us in one way or another during your life. It's an occasion to generously, spontaneously, and, and even involuntarily say thank you, God, for the blessing we receive and sharing this joy with everyone around us. And I hope this is be the lifestyle we will all adopt for today and for the rest of our lives. So thank you and amen.